Welcome, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Give us a call at 727-927-6648. You can send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com and hook you out a little there. Some great news. Our boy Steel Dynamics up 5.76% today. New cores up as well. Some, some phenomenal news. Remember, we're looking at that around the, uh, the $90 area. And that, I mean, that really came back. I foresaw it going over 100 and staying there for a little bit, but, uh, you know, can't really anticipate these kind of major buys off the top here. New cores up as well. Let's check it out here. Same kind of pretty stellar move for the steel sector today. Folks, uh, June 15th, that's in two days for all of you. Tim Ord uh, is having the, the final part of his uh, trading webinar series. This is going to be on gold and, you know, no better segue to get into it uh, as gold is, is down today. So having Tim's insight, maybe looking at what he sees regarding bottoms, uh, regarding how we're going to progress from this point on, you know, that's going to be invaluable. Take a look at gold. So we had CPI obviously come out today, right? And uh, there was a positive outlook on it. Uh, we had the GDX down 1.3%. Um, I had a buddy before I went on, he sent me Ignico Eagle. Uh, that is down 1.85% today. So the XAU is also down. Uh, some, some bearish looks, at least on the XAU, for that. Uh, if we take a look at CPI, if I can pull it through somewhere here. This is on the BLS.gov's website here. So, you know, this isn't going to be the core, but if you look here on energy, you know, there is, this is really what affected the CPI today. We were down 0.11, uh, excuse me, down 11.7 on energy commodities, 20.4, uh, on gasoline, all types, 19.7, fuel oil, you know, 37. I mean, this is, this is pretty nuts. We did have an increase in food away from home and food at home. So looking at companies maybe like Chipotle and everything um, going forward as consumers are kind of staying away from maybe higher end uh, restaurants. Um, they're still going to be eating out. That's now just be kind of become essentially like an American, part of American culture. Um, so that will stick around. Um, and, and looking for those companies that provide, you know, cheaper uh, food away from home. Eggs have gone down, though, which is stellar. So, you know, we have a little bit of uh, depression regarding that. Um, the, the major fear I have, and of course, also shelter uh, was up as well. That... Y it takes a while, I suppose, for the rates to kind of affect that. Uh, hopefully, we will see an actual, like, genuine decrease in this going forward. Uh, the core CPI is still, you know, at a significant point. But the total CPI, um, you know, was down basically because of energy. I, I do get concerned um, if we run into something where, for whatever reason, some kind of unforeseen circumstance comes around and it knocks energy up, you know, we could be back in kind of a uh, realm of trouble a little bit, at, at least on the sentiment of, of people in the economy. So that's what we're looking at. We are seeing a depression in gold because of that. And, I, you know, also always defer to Tom uh, regarding uh, gold, but that's what I'm seeing today. Uh, so kind of an interesting little development as well. I still think a lot of analysts and, and banks are looking at, you know, it, there is disinflation, I suppose, with this, but the deflation isn't particularly seen yet uh, so we still i would say are not really out of the woods but uh the market as it is now is, is loving it anyways of course we're, we're rallying pretty heavily so some news here uh want to take a look this this has a little bit of impact the u.s epa is uh, going to release a biofuel blending mandate uh, rule by june 21st folks that's my birthday after delay uh, court filing shows uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, uh, is expected to release a final rule on biofuel blending uh, volume mandates for the years 2023-2025 by June 21st uh, after seeking a one-week extension on a deadline for the rule, according to the court document on Tuesday. The EPA was set to issue a final rule by Wednesday under a court-ordered deadline, uh, but has agreed uh, to an extension with industry trade group Growth Energy, according to the filing. Uh, Reuters reported the delay early on Tuesday, citing an anonymous source. 
The final rule is set to mark a new chapter of the Renewable Fuel Standard Program, uh, which is more than a decade old. While Congress set out specific goals for the program through 2022, uh, the law expands the EPA's authority for 2023 and beyond to change the way the RFS is administered. At this summer proposal, the EPA would require oil refiners, and this is the important part, to add 20.82 billion gallons of biofuels to their fuel. Uh, by 2023, 21.87 billion gallons in 2024 and 22.68 billion gallons in 2025. 20, uh, it's been interesting. I've been watching a lot of, uh, I think it's on Business Insider um, and, and a few other sources. But just looking into some of the biofuels they have, uh, you know, they're using uh, a little bit of biofuel generated by algae. I think it's interesting and in kind of pushing this uh, through to a point uh, where we can actually see some kind of impact. However, and I, I think I might have touched on this a little bit yesterday, uh, but, but this report came out here, and it was fossil fuel company net zero plans are, quote, largely meaningless. Uh, the number of fossil fuel companies setting net zero emission targets have risen sharply over the past year, uh, but most fail to address key concerns, making them largely meaningless. Some 75 uh, of the world's largest 112 fossil fuel companies have now committed to reaching net zero. Uh, that's the point at which greenhouse gas emissions are negated by deep cuts in output elsewhere and methods to absorb atmospheric carbon dioxide. Uh, but that's up from just 51 a year ago. Uh, most targets, and this is the key point, guys, most targets do not fully cover, or rather they lack transparency on what's called scope three emissions. And these include the use of company products, uh, the biggest source of emissions for fossil fuel companies. And they don't include short-term reduction plans, uh, the report added. That made them largely meaningless. Pretty intense, huh? The report also found that none of the fossil fuel companies were making the needed commitments to move away from fossil fuel extraction or production. As it stands, some 4,000 countries, state, regions, cities, and companies globally have now committed to net zero. Uh, so that was last November, the UN issued um, on what a good net zero strategy was. And you know, this, so many times, I think they call it greenwashing, but companies use this in a lot of ways to get people to uh, basically buy their products and, and see them as a progressive company. That was something also with, um, how do you call it, like the fair trade. And I, you know, it's these kind of progressive terms they put onto products to make people feel better about buying them. And in reality, they're not hitting the point. I learned about fair trade is it's, it's not really a practice more than it is like an organization. And uh, while, you know, you're coffee bean farmers and everything get more money, they, they certainly do not get a significant portion of the product, um, especially what's charged when you have a label like that. Folks, stay tuned. We have Basil Chapman uh, with us live next.